Did you know, Durarara was almost called Dulalala. For many English translators, it was unclear as to whether it should be rendered as Durarara or Dulalala due to the inherent difficulties associated with L's and R's in the romanization of Japanese. And on top of that, there's the fact that Japanese culture is known for its love of wordplay and puns. In favour of Durarara, some thought it was some kind of Japanese onomatopoeia, while others pointed to the character Celti in support of the show's title being a take on the word Dulahan, thus Dulalala. Though clues like the URL of the official website Durarara.com eventually made the intended title clear, English readers and viewers shouldn't feel bad. People in Japan really didn't understand the title either. In the afterword of the first light novel, the source material of the anime, author Ryogo Narita took the opportunity to explain the mystery surrounding the title to his readers. It's an extremely strange title, I admit, but if you read the book you'll understand. Perhaps. As I was finishing up writing and revising the manuscript, my editor said, it's about time for us to submit an official title to marketing. And the first thing I came up with was, d d my editor said, actually, I like how mysterious that is. Let's go with that. But how do you want to handle the English spelling? I had no answer because I didn't expect him to accept it. Then he asked, will you throw in an exclamation mark like Bacano or Bow Wow have? I still had no answer because I still didn't expect him to accept it. So I said without thinking, let's put two on there. Bam bam. After a long silence, I heard the scratching of someone writing on paper. Then my editor exploded with laughter on the other side of the phone. When you write this out, it looks so stupid. Let's go with that then. That was the birth of Durarara, but as for what it means, I'm still not quite sure. There are many references to history and legend throughout Durarara. Celti is of course a Dullahan, or headless rider in Irish folklore. Headless horsemen have long been a staple of many European cultures, while one of the most well-known examples comes from the American short story The Legend of Sleepy Hollow by Washington Irving. The rivalry between the Yellow Scarves and the Blue Squares mirrors the ancient Chinese account of the Yellow Scarves Rebellion, also known as the Yellow Turban Rebellion. Taking place during the reign of Emperor Ling, the historical account tells of a peasant uprising wherein the rebels wore yellow scarves around their heads and fought against the ruling Han Dynasty. The slogan of the rebellion was, The blue sky has perished, the yellow sky will rise, with the blue sky being the Han Dynasty. The curse play wielded by Andi Sonohara, Saika, shares the reputation of possessing an unnatural thirst for blood with that of the infamous Muramasa blades. Bearing the name of the great Japanese swordsmith who forged them, superstition claims that once a Muramasa blade is drawn from its scabbard, it must draw blood, compelling its wielder to either kill others or commit suicide. Durara references not just the real world, but other anime as well. In the very first episode, Mikado runs into a cardboard cutout of Hollow from Spice and Wolf. In episode 3, a copy of Yozakura Quartet can be seen being held by Walker Yu Masaki. And in episode 15, Walker makes a reference to Kiyohiko Azuma's Yotsubato by stating that he would like to have a green-haired daughter. But aside from numerous additional references to other works, some of the most interesting easter eggs in the series reference Narita's prior work, Bakano. In the aforementioned episode 1, Jacuzzi Splot and Nice Hollystone can be seen on screen above a marquee in the background. In episode 7, along with Darker Than Black, a poster for Bakano is visible on the side of the movie theatre. And the password to the Dollars website is Bakano. Speaking of the dollars, when members of the internet-based organization meet up in person in episode 11, Isaac and Media make a special cameo while revealing themselves to be members. In both the anime and the novels, the two worlds of Bakana and Durarara are explicitly and profoundly connected beyond mere cameos. Take for instance the enigmatic Nebula Corporation. In Bakano, it owns the Flying Pussyfoot, the transcontinental locomotive which provides the primary setting for the major events of the anime. By the 21st century, the American pharmaceutical company had grown and expanded to Japan, where, like in Bakano, it attempts to use its power and influence to study the supernatural and, perhaps, obtain the long-sought-after secret to immortality.